Before you can start a free trial at Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, any of those streaming sites, they're going to want something from you. They're going to want that credit card information, but not here, not with the Filmmaker's Blog. We're giving out some free shot lists today, so stay tuned. Good day, my fellow filmmakers. My name is Kevin from thefilmmakersblog.com, and that's right, we have a website. You can check it out in the description below. But let's get to the real part of this video, the fact that we're giving away a free shot list template so that all of you guys can stay organized, meet your production deadline, and make a kick-ass film. So without any further delay, I'm gonna go straight into pretty much discussing this shot list, how I designed it, how it should be used. And so that you guys can follow along, you can just go into the description below hit the link, or I might even pin it as the first comment. So go ahead and go to the first comment, hit the link, and you can throw your email in, and I'll shoot you the shot list in a matter of moments. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do when you open up your shot list is make sure you take a look at that title tab that says, go to instructions tab located at the bottom of the page. The instructions just basically say, make sure you make a copy of the shot list template because you won't be able to edit the original. But once you make that copy, you guys can go crazy with it, put your own film in it and make it really yours. So the first part of the shot list is the location. I've broken the location up into three separate columns. We have our interior, and exterior, our description, and our day and night columns. Moving on to the second part of our shot list, we have our shots and scenes. I like to use numbers while describing my shots. So let's say this is the first shot of the day. It would be shot one, and I like to use letters to describe my scenes. So it would be shot 1A. The next row is used on set. It's a taken row. It's just a check mark box so you can check mark all of the shots you've done. Feel good about yourself every time you put that pencil to paper. Moving on is the description column. Gives you enough space to describe what's going on in your scene. Throw really important um, lines of dialogue in here to kind of reboot your memory of what this scene is and what the shot is supposed to capture. In this column, we have our size of the frame. I just put S to title it, but this is where you'll list your framing, a wide shot, medium shot, medium close-up, a close-up, or an extreme close-up. In the I column, we have our camera movement. I've just simplified the wording by just saying move, but here we have every single camera movement possible. We have none, pan, tilt, pedestal, dolly, crane, handheld zoom, rack focus, or a drone. To go along with the camera movement, we have our support system. What rig are we using? And here in this drop-down window, we have our tripod, handheld, dolly, gimbal, jib, and drone. The next row is a lens choice drop-down. We have everything here from 24, 35, 50, 85, and 100 plus. Now that's not every single lens that you'll be using, and you might be using an ultra wide 15, or you might wanna specify anything over 100, and go ahead and type that straight in. These are just suggestions of the most common focal lengths that you might use. This next section is a media section. I just added this a couple days ago when I thought it would be really useful to drop frames into your shot list for reference. What I like to do with it is host frames from either Dropbox or Google Drive and link them into my shot list. That way when I give my shot list to somebody, they'll be able to click on these links and see what I would like the shot to look like, whether it's from my video storyboard or from another film that I'd like to replicate. Lastly, you have your comments section. Now, I usually leave this section blank while actually creating my shot list, but it's a great tool to have on set to throw little notes that you've discovered whether the shot doesn't work, it doesn't edit, or you know the third take was the best, even going into editor's notes. It's a really important tool that you can use on set to stay organized. What I like to use my comment section for when actually creating my shot list is to specify if shots have the same lighting setup. If shots have the same lighting setups, then they're probably similar shots, which means you can film them back to back to have the most efficient shoot you could possibly have. And this is why a shot list is really important to organize your film to organize your scenes in a very understandable simple format to increase efficiency on set and the best part is that this is a hundred percent customizable yes I created this template but if it doesn't work for you it doesn't work for you it's really meant as a guide to get you started on the right track all right guys that's all I have for you today I hope you enjoyed this video go ahead and grab your free shot list to get started to get organized and to get cracking at your new film my name is Kevin from the filmmaker blog.com and I'll see you guys in the next video in the front row kicking back old school trash like them can
can't get enough of this more like I don't even know where I am Ooh, baby, get hyped to the beat, let's go, cause this is our jam This is our jam